welcome back to Spirit of the Outdoors. This afternoon, it's late in the evening, and uh, I'm out riding around just looking at plants, seeing what I can find. Uh, some things it is harvest time, some things not quite. Obviously, you look back here at all this goldenrod that has not yet bloomed, but yet this Brazilian vervain, vervain is blooming right now. However, this is what I am researching, so I have harvested some. This particular species, I have not found medicinal plant values on this species. Now, the regular blue vervain, uh, there's a couple different species that has medicinal uses, but this is the Brazilian vervain. It is a square stem. Uh, and I don't know a lot of detail about it. The other verveins have some common relaxing qualities. I've harvested some and I'm going to experiment with it. Don't, I don't recommend you do that. Okay. I want to be clear. Um, there's a lot of ragweed. There's a lot of all different kind of plants. Now I do not know every one all, you know, there's dog fennel and, and several things that I do know, but I do not know every plant out here. So what I'm doing is I'm using my plan app. I'm using Google. I have a book with me. I brought this Southeastern Medicinal Plant book with me because it has good color photos. I've showed it in other videos. I've linked these books to whatever I'm showing in the video down in the description. Um, so I'm just out kind of seeing what I can find, uh, hoping that I find some plants that I don't see as many of. But what I'm discovering is most of what I find is I find an abundance of it. Uh, there, some of the stuff that's kind of rare here, you just don't find a lot of anymore. And I guess it's because there's not much of it. It's not seeding itself or whatever. Um, but anyway, I'm kind of keeping my eye out for some rabbit tobacco we don't have a lot of that i have not seen any black cohosh uh i've there's i've not seen any mugwort there's just things that i am not finding but i'm looking to see what i do find so hang with me and we're just gonna look at a few plants and just see what we can run across this afternoon and uh it's time to get into medicinal plants for a little while i usually hit that hard late this time of year after gardening season before you know it really cools off because they start flowering that is when you want to harvest your medicinal plants y'all i'm finding a lot of this mint oh uh, and this is one of the mountain mints i was gonna pull some of it right here Um, and you can see it's got some long running roots and it sprouts up from those roots. And this is good for gas, like indigestion type gas. Last year, I thought I was having a heart attack one night. I don't know what I had eat, but it didn't agree with me. And I had some of this dried plant and I re realized that it was good for that. And I made a tea out of it. And y'all, within about 10 minutes, it relieved all that. And I had been fighting that for going on an hour. I mean, I was up pacing the floor. So uh, helping with, with uh, headaches, coughs, colds, fevers, such as that. This has a square stem, and you can kind of see it turns really white on the top. And uh, it, it's a good mint. I'll have to look up the actual uh, scientific name for this. I don't know it right off the top of my head, but it is one of the mountain mints. Um, but it is a good plant. I, I've used it a good bit and strong flavor. If you like really strong mint flavored tea, you'll love this plant. It is Pagnathicum muticum. So if you wanted to know the Latin name for it. Y'all, this one here is Eupatorium perfoliatum, is bone set. 
not to be confused with late bone set there's a lot of it right here and i'll show you late bone set next this plant here though is the best thing that i know of for breaking high fever if your fever is 102 103 and you've been running fever for a few days or all night or whatever and you can't get to a doctor and you need to get that fever broke this plant will do it my dad ran fever he got uh found out later after we got him to the doctor because i recommend if you're running fever you do need to go to a doctor and figure out why you're running fever but this will break it he ha he had um pneumonia and we didn't realize that we thought maybe he had covid we wasn't sure he didn't really want to go to a doctor but we when i got down there they had not checked his temperature so we got a thermometer checked his temperature it was like 102.2 or four or something he had been running fever on and off for two days i went and got this plant and it broke that fever and i think he had been running fever for probably 12 hours straight by the time it had got to that point and it broke it within about 15 minutes so i know for a fact that this plant works um and a lot of people and and i do it as well i read out of a book and i tell you what i have researched and what i have read but i can tell you on some of these plants that i have experienced with them and know for a fact they work and this is one of them but this is bone set. Now next, I'll show you late bone set. Okay, this little plant right here is late bone set. You can see how the leaves come off to the side. Now it gets on up very tall. This is a small one, uh, but this is what it looks like. And I have seen people confuse it with snake root. This is not snake root, okay? Uh, the, I've seen one guy that he argued up and down that this was snake root. It is not. This is late bone set. It has some of the same properties of the regular bone set that I just showed you that's right over here behind me right now. And, but it's not as strong as the other. You want the other bone set if you're going to use it. Now, if this is all you can get, it will work. Here's you a closer look at late bone set, a bigger one, dark red stem. this little plant right here that i have found this is a species of st john's wort uh, very good medicinal plant i don't know off the top of my head all the uses for this one this one is actually coming up when i put it in picture this as st peter's wort uh, now we also have around here st andrew's cross which is a little milder of it but i'm going i've picked a few of these i'm going to take them i'm not going to try to tell you everything about them because i don't know off the top of my head but this particular species now the regular st john's wart i can read you all the stuff on it but i'm not right now because i ain't 100 percent sure they're the same y'all i've picked some of these plants that i'm not 100 percent sure about i want to be clear that i don't recommend you do that okay uh because you if you're not really careful and know some basic principles you could mess up and get something that might would do you harm or you take a bunch of something that has a negative side effect so don't don't do as i do do as i say okay i, I know that you know <laughs> old country boy i hear he don't mind doing a little experimenting you don't need to do that uh because i mean if i get sick and die you know i mean i there's a chance i guess that i'm willing to take to try to learn everybody does something stupid so i want you to understand i don't recommend you do this all right now the things that i am telling you hey i know what this is usually it's because i done done some experimenting with that particular plant so just bear that in mind i don't want to lead nobody astray and i sure don't want to cause anybody to get sick or especially die okay i want to help not hurt 
And, and I know I'm going to get scolded by some people that says, you don't need to do that. I know I don't, but I'm doing it, okay? Let's go look over here. I found some sumac. I want to show you it. Uh, I had some planted there at the house, and I'm not going to get to use it because the birds raided mine. But this down here in this field and these burn piles is what we call them. They're, they're where they log this and cleaned everything up and piled all the brush and stuff up in piles and they don't bush hog that so it kind of grows up and we call them brush piles or burn piles and and there's a lot of plants growing in them because really what it's doing now is decaying down and it's probably composting so let's go over there and look at it and talk about it a little bit Okay, y'all, you see this plant right here? These berries, I went ahead and cut this one so you could get a good look. This is sumac. This is a shrub or tree. It is not poison sumac, okay? A lot of people get bad confused, but you see these berries and how they are a purplish looking color. Um. Uh, I want to read to you about this. Now, I, yeah, I set this all up. This is a tall tree back here behind you that you see right over here. And yes, I set the sunset up just because it was so beautiful. I, I didn't want you to miss it. Medicinal uses of sumac. Um, now, before I read this, what this is most commonly used for in bushcraft and survival, I would say, is they cut these berries off and they put them in water and shake it up and make like a... a gatorade type drink kool-aid out of it you can add a little sugar but I, it's kind of sour let me read to you about the medicinal uses now obviously we're using the same book that i brought back down here with me the flavor of the berries is sour and astringent and this indicates it used to cool and shrink inflamed tissues it can be refreshingly cooling to drink on a hot day and in the same vein can be used to bring down an overly high fever. So as the bone set, this will also do the same things. Uh, don't know which one works better, but it says, like many berries, sumacs are high in vitamin C and flavonoids, which are also good for the immune system. And long-term help. This might be in part explained why the fruit was used for respiratory help. The berries and the roots have been used to cool off inflammation and irritation in the urinary tract, while the astringency helps create better tissue tone. The tincture, or especially the tea, can help with symptoms of frequent urination or sim symptomatically for chronic irritation such as interstitial Scientists. Sumac has also been used for passive ulcers anywhere in the digestive tract. This is probably a combination of its uses as an astringent, closing up wounds, and the flavonoids speeding up healing and acting as a tissue tonic. For the same reason, it can be used as a mouth rinse for aptus ulcers, gum disease, or other conditions where tissues in the mouth are damaged, boggy with poor circulation. Uh, so this is a native, uh, you can use the roots, the plants. Um, I'm sure a little more in-depth study would explain which part is better at what. I'm gonna go ahead and take this all home with me. I wanted to share some of these plants with you. Uh, obviously it is getting late, thus the sun going down. So we're gonna conclude this video. Thank you for watching and following along with me out here. Just kind of me out rambling around, looking at some plants, actually doing a little studying and seeing what I can find. We're early in the harvest season of medicinal plants. So between all the month of August and into early September, when the golden rods all start blooming, we'll be hitting some medicinal plants here, there and yonder. So thank you for watching Spirit of the Outdoors. Keep up with the channel. If you hadn't subscribed already, go ahead and do that, y'all, because I'm going to have fun and crack some jokes, 
but we're going to learn some things. I want to help you guys. So thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Remember, the best way to do things is the way you like to do it. We'll see y'all. Y'all have a good one.